Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today we're going to do some really cool stuff. I'm going to show you in R how we're going to remove NAs. NAs are your, obviously, it stands for not available or some people just call it a null. There's no number there uh, when they're supposed to be. It's a blank space in a numeric column, but it could be also in a text column or something else. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quickly. So let's go through this. Uh, first, what we're going to do is load our library. So you got Cable Extra, just because we want to look pretty. Tidiverse and Zoo. So if you do not have any of these three, you just use install.packages and then the name of the package or, or library inside of quotation marks. <clears throat> Once you have that, we're going to load the data set. In this case, I'm using a data set that I've put out there uh, in many of my other videos, Kratom Sales. It's a local store that sells Kratom products, uh, kind of like a head shop type product store. Okay, so what we're using here is test data one. We're going to load that in. That's our data frame. We're going to do the read.csv uh, function. And then the file name is right here. It's location on my local drive <clears throat> right there. And then header equals true, separator equals comma. And then we take that right here. So this is the data frame. And we take the head of it, right? We're going to put it into DF. DF is just a holder for it. And then I'm going to use the cable, which is in cable extra. Remember, that's why we loaded this in. And I'm going to use that right here with cable styling of bootstrap options equals striped, font size equals 10, width equals false. I'm going to show you why I'm going to do that. So let's run this, okay? If I run this, I already have that, so I've got that in there. But I can run it again. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, so let's just run that. And that loads the data, right? And then we put this into here. And now when I do this, watch what happens. So I'm going to take, remember I'm doing the head, right? So let's do this. And what it does, it gives me the top six, right? The head, if I use one of the bottom six, it'd be tail, okay? So I would just put tail there instead of head for that function. And what the cable function does with the striped is it gives me the data here in a nice looking, you know, a uh, couple of the rows are a little bit darker than the other, every other row. Makes it nice and pretty to look at. And I can look at the, the data that we're looking at. So I've got in this data, you know, week number, date Y, which is the year, right? 2018, 2017, total sales, transactions, units, average T, which would probably be your average temperature. I haven't looked at this data in a while. Rank. Violent crimes, that's your violent crime statistics for that area, for that store. This might be multiple stores, um, or it might be just be during that week. I don't remember exactly, but it doesn't matter. Ratio of uh, something and the day type. Okay, I remember that uh, day type was, we were trying to, in a previous video, to figure out was it going to be a high crime or a high sales or a low sales day based off of violent crime. And, uh, temperature and their effects on predicting that. So that was from a previous video. But here we're not trying to do that. Okay, we've already taken the data. We've already done that. If you want to find that out, go back to my other videos. There are ones on predictions and stuff, and that's what we use this for. Okay, in this video, we're going to strictly work on not, uh, not available data or nulls. Okay, so first what we're going to do is in this data, we're only looking at six rows or six rows here. That doesn't tell you if there's anything missing or not. And from what we see here, everything's there in those six rows. But what we're going to do next is we're going to look for NAs, not availables, and that's with this is.na function. So we run this, and that gives you this. And we can see from there that the last row, row 60, has a true in it. See that right there? And if we go above, we can see other ones for row 60 right there. That whole row has a lot of nulls or not availables in it. So what we want to do is, and that's one way to find it out. It's kind of messy, though, because if you have a lot of rows of data, it's hard to see those trues if there's only a few nulls. If there's a lot, yeah, you can see it. So we go to this one, and this is your alternative, which is just use summary of that same data frame that we created earlier, test data one. And if you run this, what that does is it gives the same data, but differently. So it gives it to you instead as a synopsis of that column. And at the bottom, see where it says NAs? You can see clearly there is one NA for each column. Pretty much, I think all of them have that. Okay, so that's that last row. Now this one, the summary function, does not give you uh, the exact location of where that null is. The previous one does. Now, if I want to go and look at that row, let's say I want to look at it, that exact row and see what's going on there, right? So I use the data frame 
with these quotation or uh, these uh, brackets, and uh, then the row number comma with nothing after it. So then watch this. If I hit this, I've got that 60th row, and it tells me exactly there everything is an NA. Okay, so we know that one's bad. Now, how do we deal with it? Do we delete it, or do we use an aggregate? function like the mean on it. So it depends on the data. It depends on what you want to do. So what I'm doing here, just like I gave you earlier, two different ways to look to find the NAs. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look and uh, use two different uh, methods here. Now this also looks at it differently. Before we deal with it, um, what if I did this? So see how you're looking at it here? And it's kind of a little bit ugly, but it's still, it quickly tells you you got NAs in it. What if I want to use the earlier style like this to look at it? So just use that same thing. Instead, we put the last column like we did here into DF row 60, right? Because that's what it is, data frame row 60. And then we use the exact same cable function we did earlier. And if you do this, there you go. You end up with that 60th row. It tells you exactly what it is. Okay, just a different way of looking at it. Now, in dealing with it, I've got two different ways to deal with it, right? So the first is we can delete it. So if I delete it, anytime I want to delete something, I'm going to go and put it into a different data frame. So I originally, so I'm not messing with the test data one data frame, and I use the function na.omit, right? And then I put that into test data one without na's one, right? So what that's going to do, if I do that, is that's going to give me 59 observations because the 60th row is now gone. It was deleted, right? So now if I take this summary function we used earlier and look at it, the NAs are gone. See that bottom part where it would say the N it had NAs? It's gone. Now, on the same token, I can I didn't mess with test data one, right? All I did was mess with test data one without NAs. So I can use the NA.aggregate function, which is this guy right here, and I can apply that to test data one with the L apply, right? True and test data one. This is how it works. This is the exact code right here. You're going to use this replace test data one true L apply of test data one and the NA dot aggregate. And what this does is it will replace the NA with the mean of the column. So what that means is, you know, out of all of the data in that column, it's going to get put the mean in there, which is a pretty accurate way of removing it instead of just deleting it because it could have been an outlier. This now uses the mean instead. So we're going to put that into this data frame, which is different than this one with the number down as number one, this one has the number two behind it. So let's do this, right? So let's do that. And then I'm going to compare them and show you the difference between the two so you can figure out, well, which would I want to use? All right, I'll show you a quick way how to do that. So now you get the summary of it, right? Same thing, the NAs are gone, but we have 60 observations instead of 59 because we have one that has the mean of the columns in it, right? Now, since they're all numerical columns, you know, date, total sales, transactions, units, and so on, this works for that. Now, next, what I want to do is, what if I want to see the difference between the two? We know how to get rid of it. We can delete it. We can get the aggregate of it. But let's see the difference between the two. So if I take this code right here, we have the PAR just to parameterize the screen, right? So instead of seeing just one big uh, graph, we can see two, right? If I do this, equals C, one comma two. What that does, one comma one gives me one graph. One comma two gives me two graphs. Uh, one comma four would give would break it up to have four graphs in it. I just need two. And then what I'm doing is the, a simple plot, the plot function of day type, which is the end column, right? So if I go over the way to the right, that was this. Day type was A or B, based on violent crime, and the data is the different uh, data frames I put in, right? So test data without NAs one and test data one without NAs two, right? So I run this all together, just like that, boom. And what I get is this graph, this, these two graphs right here. Let me bring, bring them up a little bit so you can see them better. And uh, what we've got here is you've got your violent crime, right? And your day type. And if you look at this, you've got the big difference is right here at about 300. There's a spot where it was removed in the first one, and it's got the mean, right? So that is the mean in the second one. So it's whatever works for you best. But this shows you exactly how to quickly identify and remove NAs 
which could cause problems in your code later on, quickly, easily, and methodically. So I hope you found this helpful and interesting. Um, please take a moment to subscribe, like, share, and make sure you click that bell so that you get notified whenever I put up a new uh, video like this or other ones that I'll do. And we cover all kinds of stuff from data science, data analytics, uh, Power BI, visualizations, all kinds of stuff related to you know what you would use in the real world with real business applications for data science and data analytics. So again, please take a moment to subscribe, like, share, click that bell, and then also leave me a comment. Let me know what you think, what you'd like to see, how things are going for you. Uh, I'd love to hear from my subscribers and my viewers. Thanks again and have a great day.